Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of No Capes, the comic book chat show where I will join every week with a fellow comics creator and talk about a cool indie comic that we both read and enjoy. Uh, this week I have with me, uh, and c please correct me if I get this wrong, Ahmed Rafat. Yeah, that's, you, you got it right. I, that's good. I got uh, Marwan's <laughs> wrong on our episode. So, uh, no, there's so I mean, many uh, comic books. If, if, you're, if you're speaking Arabic, it's Ahmad Rafat, but I know the, the ah sound. Uh, not a lot of people know how to do it, so Ahmad Rafat is fine. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, there's so many comic book creators yeah, you're, you're, out there you're, you're, you're who have good. only ever seen their names written. There, there was a Twitter thread today about how to pronounce uh, yes. names of creators. Yes, I, uh, I've taken that, note of a few of those. Yeah, that's but that's the problem. I, I mean, when I go to a con, I don't even know the faces. That's that's another thing. Uh, I just know the arts and, and the writing and the names printed on comics. <laughs> so so uh, so I just so sometimes I bump into people that I know and I've read stuff for, but I don't know that this is them. <laughs> Which I think that's the problem with the. Uh, being a comics creator in general, you know my work, not your face or name. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, thankfully, mine's extremely easy, <laughs> so I won't have to worry yeah. about that too much in the future. Yeah, it is. It is quite easy. Much easier than uh, the rest of us. <laughs> Um, and today, uh, we're actually talking about yet two weeks in a row, another comic that I hadn't heard of, uh, before my guest suggested it, uh, which is Barrier. Give me one second and I'll just flash this up on the screen. Barrier by Brian K. Vaughan, Marcos Martin, and, uh, Monza Vicente? I hope I got that right. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that thread and see if that creator's name is in the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's an interesting format too, in the like the horizontal landscape style. It it, it is, yeah, and I think that's because it's it was published as a web comic in mm. the beginning, and then it was. Uh, I'll tell you the story. Yeah, but it's it's how how I came across the comic. It's, it's such a weird story, and I fell in love with it um, uh, after I've read it, and I've been. Uh, eager to chat about it with anyone <laughs> since then because i because i mean we're we're we're, we're doing spoilers here we're, we're discussing everything or uh, or are we trying to um, well uh, avoid basically what i do is i go spoilerish free for the first All 20 right. minutes or so and then okay. be like hey anyone who's listening if you haven't read the comic Come yeah. back in an hour, go read the comic, and then come back and watch the, <laughs> come, the come episode. Come back and join us. Um, yeah, because because there is there is a hook in the first issue, uh, and I found it very uh, annoying. Well, not annoying, but uh, it's make, making it difficult. But the, the minute you understand that the hook is the whole point of the comic, you realize how how brilliant the the whole idea is oh hang uh, on. what happened there oh no never mind sorry i was looking at a, one of my inputs there was no sound coming out of it and i thought it was you but right. that wasn't <laughs> all right that's that's cool um people can hear me yes uh so yeah i mean i've uh, uh i've the the way i came across barrier was uh uh when Marcus Martin did the Spider-Man issue 801, uh, I, I saw that and I was like, uh, I haven't heard his name recently uh, on anything mainstream because he was doing Marvel stuff and DC stuff up until 2013, 2012, something like that. Yeah. And then he, he started doing, he, he was doing Private Eye and then uh, and then Barrier and then he came back for the Spider-Man uh, uh, 8, 8, the, the the final dance lot spider-man issue uh, yeah. before he finished his run and and uh, i saw that and i was like you know I, uh, what what have he been up to and uh, a lot of people on twitter suggest you know you need to read barrier if you haven't because it's it's amazing and uh, and you should read it right now and, and uh on that day i was uh i was going to london to meet a friend so i 
uh, and uh, a friend from Egypt. So uh, uh, she asked me to uh, show her all the comic book shops uh, in the, the big ones in London. And uh, that was that was uh, in 2018. Uh, around the same time, <coughs> Image decided to uh, release a print uh, version of the of the comic. Yep. So so I walked into the shop that day and I saw Barrier on the shelf, the five issues, picked them up, read most of it on on the way back uh, to uh, on the on the way back home on the train. Stayed up for the rest of the night to finish the rest of it. I uh, just couldn't, you know, couldn't put it down until I was done with all five issues. Um, and yeah, I mean, how how did you find it? Um, um, I'm glad I guided you to. Uh, yeah, to, I've to really read. enjoyed uh, the the aesthetics and the visuals and everything in it. Um, I did yeah. struggle with the bilingual parts of it. Well, yeah, that's see, that's that's the well, that's that's the reason why. That's that's the part I was saying uh, annoyed me in the beginning, but uh, but after that I realized that that's the that's the whole point of the comic, and that's why it's called Barrier. Yeah. So so so, so when I was reading it, uh, for, uh, obviously half the half the comic is in uh, in English and the other half is in Spanish, and when I was reading the first issue, should, should we give an intro about the, yeah, the yeah. comic itself? Yeah. So so the comic is basically about uh, these two characters. One of them is called Liddy. Uh, she's uh, she's a farm owner in Texas who's been having incidents of uh, animals being mutilated and stuff. Uh, her animals, and uh, she doesn't know what's going on. She uh, calls the local authorities. They say they're not going to be able to do anything. So she tries to hire some private uh, mercenary, but they have a disagreement uh, about uh, how to handle things. Uh, and then. Uh, we have this other character, Oscar, who's from Honduras and uh, is trying to cross the border to America illegally. So, uh, you know, the, the usual route, escaping into a truck and then trying to cross the border. Uh, I think, I think the, the, he had a run with, uh, with the border patrol. Yeah. Uh, and uh, eventually they, both of them cross each other's path is he he lands into her farm and she thinks he's uh the, one of the people who've been killing her livestock she thinks it's uh, it's like the uh, local mob wants to take her farm to use it and they're kind of trying to drive her out and then both of them get abducted by aliens so <laughs> You know, just changes changes everything in a second. But yeah, for the you, you were gonna say something or uh... oh no, I was just um just saying yeah, like it, yeah, all of a sudden aliens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, and like like you said, the 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 the, the first issue, uh, the the Lydia's parts are in English, obviously, but uh, Oscar's parts are in Spanish. And. Uh, when I was reading that, n normally I'm used to having some kind of translation in, you know, a caption box in, yeah. at the bottom of the panel, or I went to the back of the issue looking for a translation of the script and I couldn't find anything. And I was like, uh, is this, am I reading it right? Is there something I'm missing? What's... Yeah, I thought that for a second as well. I was like, did I get the yeah. right version? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was just like, is there, is there an English only version of this? And I got the wrong one. But then, if you if you go back to the end of the first issue, uh, you find a note from Brian K. Vaughan saying, "Yes, the half the issue is in Spanish. Uh, there is no given translation. Uh, if you want to go to Google Translate and type in the 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 dialogue and get a translation, go ahead. But uh, the comic is meant to be enjoyed." without any translation and it just struck me that this is the whole point you know uh, the the point is about these two characters who do not speak the same language uh who are put together in a situation uh, and and obviously uh, when you read the first issue there's some animosity between both of them Liddy is not very trusting of immigrants in general uh in in the way she speaks about them and in the way she speaks to the one of the police officers who is uh, who is of uh, Mexican uh, descendants, uh, 
and and Oscar is obviously uh, crossing the border, so generally paranoid about anyone American, you know, yeah. the, taking them to to the authorities or you know just uh, getting in trouble. Uh, so you've got these two people who do not speak the same language and uh, and who have reasons to hate each other, but they have to work together to escape the aliens or and understand what the hell's going on. At least for the first uh, for the first two issues, understand what what happened to them, and uh, why have they suddenly been snatched from the farm and taken to this very exotic place, and and that's that's the whole that's the that's the whole point. It's, if if you don't understand the other the other person was what the other person's saying, uh, that's that's part of the experience. So yeah. you're you're reading it from Lydia's point of view. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and 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 that's uh, and that's that's the meaning of the title barrier. So uh, so it's it's the language barrier, first and foremost, between these two characters and between people in general. I mean, language remains the biggest barrier between people all over the world. If if you can't speak the language, then that kind of limits what you can how how much you can communicate with somebody else. Yeah, and. Uh, so uh, so yeah, I, I, like like you, I struggled in the beginning, but but I figured out that this is the the entire point of the comic, and it's done in a very it's it's done in a very smart way, and I think it's one of the ideas that are best suited for for a comic format. Obviously, you can't do this in a written text because yeah, he wasn't able to. Yeah, you need those visual cues. Yeah, yeah, and and in in a movie, it is possible but again with a, with a comic you're able to focus on detail you're able to freeze time and focus on specific details as as opposed to a movie if you're seeing it in the cinema you have to go back and forth yeah. but we, you can't go you can't go back and forth in the cinema but if you're watching on a dvd you have to probably go back and forth to just uh look at some details that you might have missed that might explain things but with a comic it's the page there you can stay on the page uh you know uh, look at it as much as you want uh to make understand what's going on before you move on to the next one so uh so it's a very smart idea and yeah it's it shows the how powerful comics are as a medium yeah no that's exactly right um <clears throat> i'm actually gonna what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna flick the switch and put some of the comic up on the screen do you have your yeah. copy handy um, I have my copy here. Yeah, cool. I've, I've got the cool. five ones here. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, I've just got it on. Um, I think it's page three on the version that I've got here, where it says chapter one, and it's that really nice pink and purple artwork. Yeah. Let me just. Uh, yeah, it's just the first few pages are all purple. Is it this one? Uh, hang on. Let me. Or yeah, there's there's a page that says Liddy, Texas, or is that one? Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I don't have that page actually. I don't. Oh, think. all right. I've got like the orange. I've got the collected edition up on my screen here. Okay. So um, the it's I've got the page where it's like the um it's the border fence, with the purple night sky and the pink landscape. Oh, that's all right. That's that's the that's the cover for. Ah uh, uh, yeah, cool. Yep. Yeah, that's 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 the cover for uh, for the first issue. Yeah, yeah. Cool. The the yeah. colors are amazing in this book. It's just uh the, the whole the whole the whole thing. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of Marcos Martin's art, and uh, he's he's one of these artists that make it look so easy, you know, drawing. Yeah. There 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 are there are a couple of artists that uh, their artwork is very simple, that it makes it it makes it quite easy, look quite easy, but. Uh, but it's not obviously. Because, yeah, uh, like I love we, the we lizard. We both know that. <laughs> yeah, and and the animals and uh, and, yeah. and everything, the, the way they're uh, drawn and rendered, it's very. Uh, it's 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 very it's very much his own style, but it's also very realistic. It's not it's not cartoonish, and it kind of shows how how harsh the the the, the environment is, the the whole area. Yeah. It, uh, so yeah. And 
when when we get to the parts with the, with the aliens, it's just insane. The the the, the visuals are it's it's unlike anything I've seen before, to be honest. Uh, yeah, for, for anyone that's just joining us now, if you haven't read this comic, we are heading into sto- spoiler territory now because we're going to show yeah. some of the pages and we're going to talk about them more in depth. So if you don't want to have it spoiled before you read it, um, go grab it. It's pay what you want. The link is in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link is in the description. And, um, yeah, you can... I. Uh, it's pay what you want. Um, obviously, it's a really good piece of work, so pay whatever you can. Um, it's very good. It's, uh, it's very relevant. Uh, and, uh, this this came out in two thousand and fifteen or two thousand sixteen, but I, I think yeah, reading I think, it now. I think I remember seeing some posts about it a while back, but I never got around to getting a copy of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 much more relevant in in our current times than it was back in two thousand sixteen. Yeah. And, um, no, I'm not gonna. Say, I'm not gonna say why, but I think the 2016 says everything. Yeah, yeah. I've been really struggling with a lot of um, mainstream and even indie, but mainstreamish comics at the moment, um, because of how America centric everything yeah. is. It's really hard to find a lot of stories that aren't set in America, even indie ones. Um, Yeah. So that was, that was another barrier for me as well was I like, I really enjoyed the book, but that was a barrier for me in that this particular story is a very American. It's very specific to America. Yeah. Experience. Yeah. 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 Like not to say that, um, you know, England and Australia don't have our own immigration stories and, issues and things to talk about but they're completely different to this yeah yeah i get what you mean but um again if if uh, i mean we've we've had incidents here in england and i'm pretty sure in australia and everywhere in the world where where people uh get abused verbally abused or attacked because they're talking a different language than Mm -hmm. the, the not not english and uh and the person, somebody doesn't understand them and decides to, you know, throw, uh, throw a tantrum because, you know, the, whoever does that is really a uh, kid. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, and start verbally abusing them and, you know, uh, sometimes it gets physical. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, the, obviously the story itself is centric, uh, America-centric. But, but the, the experience... Theme, yeah, the theme of somebody mistrusting you because you yeah. don't speak the same language, or uh, is that's more or, universal, or, or yeah, or automatically assuming that you're not saying good things when you speak a different because that's that's uh, th- that that was in the comic I think in, in some of the panels when when the when Oscar starts speaking in Spanish, Liddy assumes that he's threatening her or yeah I remember or, yep yeah but but then she realizes that. He really can't speak English, and he's just as frightened as she is. So, uh, so, uh, so, yeah. I mean, I mean, the theme, and, and I think most comics are America centric because uh, America remains the biggest producer of yeah comics. <laughs> yeah, that that <laughs> or, is it. It is, and like it makes sense, but it is it's really difficult when I'm like I don't even necessarily want Australian stories, although Australian stories would be great just for the sake of a bit of diversity yeah, yeah. and also clearing up a few things that people overseas seem to think about Australia, which is, that's a whole different story. Yeah. Yeah. Although to be fair for some of the people that ask us questions about the kinds of animals and things like I literally was listening to koalas fighting outside my window last night. All right, so the stories are true. The, all the, the wild, wild, wildlife. <laughs> they're true to a, to a degree, yeah. Like, I live... There's a parkland and stuff right outside of our house. And in my studio here, I've got big glass windows right in front of me that look out over the fence to the river. And out yeah. near there is a whole bunch of gum trees and stuff like that. And we get... Every night, we can hear the koalas bellowing, and it just sounds ungodly, echoing up and down the creekway. <laughs> Yeah, I never see them. Uh, Other people do because they get up early enough. 
But I yeah, mean, qua- 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 koalas are. I mean, they are kind of the mascot of Australia because when I was uh, I was working on uh, the anthology Australia Burns uh, earlier. Oh this yeah, year. yeah, you did work on that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did a I did a pin up, and uh, I think all the artwork had koalas. Yeah, well, especially <laughs> in, in the I think especially with the wildfire, yeah, yeah, with especially yeah, because there was a lot of. Um, fires up in Queensland at the time as well yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. most yeah. of the koalas are up here yeah yeah um I, I wanted yeah, I to get know. involved in that but I was still doing catch up on university and the player screen stuff so it, I, I actually got involved in a paper mini project for the same purposes yeah, um, yeah. a bunch of us got together and did Australian themed paper minis to raise money for the wildlife yeah, I was I was supposed to do a short story for for that one, but because uh, it it uh, the the whole thing came together when I was going through a difficult personal time. My my dad uh, was sick during that time, and uh, I was supposed to do a, a four page story, but uh, obviously the the deadline was quite urgent because the funds were needed to yeah. help with with the fires that were going on at the time. So, uh, so uh, I told Tim I was I was working with Tim on this one. Uh, I told him I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, and you know I don't want to say I'll do it and then not be able to, and just leave you in a bad situation. So I'll, I'll dial down and and do something. I, I still want to be involved because I want to help, but yeah. uh, but I'll I'll do something smaller for this one. So I ended up doing a pin up with uh, with knock around guy. Oh from yeah, I remember seeing that one. Yeah, I really yeah. liked it. Thanks, and uh, and uh, another character, uh, the flame. One of the characters, one of the public domain characters that Tim uh, did a comic about uh, last year, and lots of koalas, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I mean, out of all of the animals, the koala is probably the second cutest. So they yeah. are very po- what's popular. The, what's the first? Quokkas. All right. What are these? Uh, they live in Western Australia only. Um, okay. And you might have seen them. They kind of look like kangaroos if they were Smurfs. I'll have to. They're I might like have. Uh, this big. I'll have, to, I'll have to look it up. And they always look really, really happy. That's good. They've got like a That's big cool. smiley face. Um, That's cool. And they're not scared of people because they don't have any natural predators where they live. That's good. So they're that's, not, they're not afraid. Yeah, that's 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 handy. I'd, I'd love to visit one day. I mean, I've been working with Tim for four years, four years. Yeah, four years now, and I've never met him in person. And it's just insane. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I just visit to meet him. You know, just to, just uh, just to, to 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 meet up and uh, just give give him a big hug. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I do know that. Every year, I put like a bunch of you guys that I want to work with or want to see in the um, suggestion box for Oz Comic Con. So yeah. I will be keeping yeah. on doing that every year until they I'll, bring I'll you make, over. I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it one day. And uh, yeah, but back to the to the American centric thing. Uh, that's uh, uh, I was I was going to say that's that's one of the reasons why. Uh, I did the Lozpa, which is uh, the Egyptian comic book series. Uh, uh, I uh, this was my first comic. I started working on it in 2015, and and the main reason is uh, me and the guys who were doing it loved superheroes, but all the superhero comic books were very American centric. Mm-hmm. So so we loved the idea, but it wasn't really having the kind of story that happens in Egypt. So we decided to take that general theme of a superhero, spin it around a little bit to give it an Egyptian feel, you know, bits of folklore and local culture and stuff like that, and write stories that actually happened, you know, in 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 my back street. So yeah. so uh, so I was drawing the neighborhood that I grew up in, but with superheroes flying around and you know police chasing criminals and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I get your points. Uh, Is that about... available? To, to people to buy at the moment it's most of it is available in arabic we've been working on a translation but it's it's been taking some time because yeah. no one is working on it full time 
Uh, but the first issue is available in English, the one that came out in 2015. Cool. Uh, I think it's available for free now. I'll, I'll send you some links after we uh, after we finish. Yeah, I'll link. This. It, we'll link that in the YouTube dis, uh, description um, for yeah. everyone because I want to read that as well. Because one, I also love superhero stories, but I'm so over everything happening in New York. Yeah, I really yeah. want to see some stories, even with the American characters, if needs be, but elsewhere. Yeah, there's a whole yeah, I, world wor to explore, world, yeah. but everything happens in New York or LA or something. Yeah, yeah, I, they 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 step outside every couple of years for like one adventure or something. Yeah, uh, I lately think, uh, they've been like teleporting to Australia for ten minutes and then off they go again. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, I met David Finch a couple of years ago uh, here in, in one of the cons and uh, he was telling me about the Batman story that takes place in Cairo and he was like, how how did I get Cairo? Did, did, was this right? And uh, it was a mishmash between Cairo and New York because we don't have these huge water, uh, yeah. what do you call them, water stores, storage things, you know, the, the ones yeah. that are in there that all the time and that. Yeah, I've you seen that a couple of times metal. for Australia as well. They put them on and like, we don't have those here. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know, it's, it's all right, but we don't have any of that stuff, water stuff in Cairo, really. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I'd love to see Superman spending some time in Egypt or Batman yeah, or Spider-Man. Yeah, that would be great. And and getting it right, you know, not not the usual cliche desert camels yes. stuff. I mean, I've seen when people put some effort in and actually show the cities, yeah. and I yeah, want to see yeah. more of that, man. I want to see yeah, so I was, much more of that. I was, I was actually a couple of weeks ago. Somebody sent me. Uh, do you know an anime called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? I know of it. I haven't watched it. Yeah, I know of it as well. I've never watched, it, but somebody sent me a clip from uh, the nineties where they. It took place in Egypt, and it was spot on, right? Even the billboards, everything. It, it was, it was, just, it was cool. mind blowing how 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 accurate they got it. That's really but, cool. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I wish I wish that was the case. Uh, well, I'm really looking forward to reading your comic then, because for like two thanks. reasons. One, I want superheroes that are outside of the U.S. Two, um, when I was a kid, and my ADHD brain used to let me read pros a lot more i was uh just a, a myth head every country every pantheon every folklore book i could get my hands on no matter where it was from i would devour it and um i used to be like a walking encyclopedia of egyptian mythology when i was like oh that's this big that's really cool um, you know, I can't remember a lot know. of it anymore, but I thought it was amazing and it was so intriguing. And so, like, to read a like a superhero title with elements of that and real yeah bits, like it, yeah, thank you, please, yes. It's it's a bit of a mishmash between old stuff and new stuff, but one of the characters is the reincarnation of uh, the Egyptian god Horus in current times, and there's a whole the whole there's a whole backstory to it, like how they. Yep knew the time will come that uh, Egypt will need a superhero, so they preserved, uh, like, a, a baby representing the gods. Yep. And then the, the baby woke up in 1984 and uh, and grew up to become the superhero that uh, he is now. Cool. So, yeah, you there's there's a lot of stuff like that in it, so you'll hope, hope you'll enjoy it. Oh, I'm sure I will. I mean, like, that kind of storyline plus your art, the art, the art is. This was my first comic book, so uh, the art is uh, is is not as solid as it looked back in two thousand fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a testament of where I was in time. Yeah, so. I, I know what you mean. Like like even like that, which is my my page for Frankie's comic, compared to the pinup that I started drawing after the comic was on Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, it's and that's it's, only six months difference. Yeah, it's 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 like a moving target. You, you, <laughs> you're 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 never gonna be able to. There's always the, the 
the new stuff is always going to be better than the old stuff or you're always going to be revising your style yeah. and uh, the, the way you do things and there's no point in looking back at things and hating them exactly because they're not it's, it's just how we were at the time exactly so, uh, yeah okay. i can see areas where i would love to have improved on that but i'm also really happy with it because i've never done anything like that before yeah exactly like yeah. the restrictions of working in black and white compared to color when i realized oh i need to shade this yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my usual style ain't gonna work because i've been working uh, in color a lot more recently i've realized how uh colors can really uh uh fix uh, not fix but but you can get away with a lot in the pencils and the inks if the work is colored yeah the colors colors can hide a, a lot of a lot of wonky stuff exactly like, uh, this one here wouldn't work without the colors yeah yeah I, I, and now i realize when, when i'm doing something in color i'm much I'm much less I'm much more relaxed because i know you know with the color people are going to be able to tell the difference between this bit and that bit but yeah. if it's in black and white you need to make sure that everything is clear <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> yeah and i've been so used to just doing like line art like just line art and then colors yeah yeah that when i realized oh no i'm supposed to do this in just black and white it was yeah. a, an entirely different experience but i had just it, bought my screen tone brushes and everything and got my new drawing tablet and clip studio so i was like all right you're ready for that <laughs> let's have yeah. at it and uh, i ended yeah. up being pretty happy with how it came out but That's um good. There's still a lot to learn. Like, I'm very jealous of your grasp of shadows. I, well, I mean, like I told you, just a lamp and a camera and yeah, a lot of city, a lot of a lot, a lot of city photo references. Yes, yeah. and <laughs> a lot of practicing. I get a, a lot of yeah, yeah. That's the thing I need to it's, start doing uh, more is more studies it's 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 a journey and uh, it never ends i i, I don't want to be 100 percent happy with what i'm doing one day because Thanks. it means that you got complacent there's, yeah there's always something to learn there's always there's always room for improvement there's always something extra that you can do so uh so yeah but i mean it's it's fun that's why we're doing it we're having fun <laughs> <laughs> i just realized that i've had the comic up this and this entire time and forgot to switch back to our oh. cameras so because I was showing uh, off the artwork. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, no, but I... It's really, really good the way that everything's done. Like, uh, actually, I'm going to bring that artwork back up for one second and show the page where Liddy first turns up on the horse. Yeah. Because it's one of my favorites, actually. The, the 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 art and and this and in the whole comic i mean I've, i'm a big fan of mark martin and the art on this one is unreal and the art is one of the reasons why the whole thing works because uh because if the art not not just the art itself but the storytelling uh, part of the the art as well because if the story was not told well visually you're not going to be able to it's it's going to break the whole concept and and uh just Marcos, the way he tells the story, it, everything is clear. You can understand the emotions that the characters are going through without needing to read uh, or understand what they're saying. You can you can tell if Oscar's scared or angry or yeah. agitated or trying to help or you know, uh, and and that's uh, that's why one of the reasons why it works that the, you know the art is this good, and the colors are amazing as well. The they pink are. and um, I'm going to pop then, up Oscar's intro page now, where we just get that headshot of him as well. Yeah. Uh, but continue what yeah. you were saying. I just wanted to show him. Um, yeah. And a lot of parallels as well between both characters and the art itself. There, there, there are a lot of visual motifs uh, being used throughout the comic that uh, just show that uh, even though these are two completely different characters, they are uh, more or less the same you know they're they're humans they've both characters had uh, their fair share of trauma in the past yeah uh, and they're trying to 
Oscar's trying to escape from it. Liddy is trying to cling to what is left from that past life. Or even, I mean, you can, you can say that Oscar is still trying to cling to part of that, you know, the, the red book that he keeps carrying around. So he's still clinging to a small part of his previous life. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the way the faces are shown and there are this, I, I think there's a, there's a page in at the end of uh, chapter one where she's uh, pointing the gun at him and both faces are at the same angle and the same. Yeah, the same I literally just got to that page as you said that. Yeah, both are frightened, uh, both are tilted in the same angle and then the faces kind of merge and both of them are abducted. So... Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, it, it just shows uh, the parallels between these two characters, even though they might seem completely different on the outside. Uh, but when you get to know them, you see how similar they are. Yeah, I was going to go and back uh, up to that page actually. Um, that shot you're talking about, where they've got like both their faces side by side, yeah, with yeah, the white yeah, background. I just had to stop yeah. and just comment for a second on the eyes. I don't know exactly what it is about them but the eyes on both characters in that specific set of close-ups on the panels I love it I just I just love the shape of them I love yeah, the simplicity yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is about them but I think that is two of my favorite things in the art in this entire book uh, that's that's uh, that's one thing with uh, with Marcus Martin's art. It's it's quite simple. I mean, if you look at the eye, there isn't very elaborate shading or anything. It's no. just uh, it's, it's very simple lines, but it, it it tells the story. You can tell that both of them are frightened. They're 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 scared of each other, and then they're scared of what is going on because this is the second they get abducted with by aliens. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean these these panels, these six panels, just tell a lot about the mood of both characters and, and where they are emotionally and uh, you don't even you don't need to read any of the text you just need to look at the pages to see to understand what's going on in, on, in their minds and yeah I, I remember one thing about uh, about uh, America centric uh, yeah because uh, in I think if this is an issue three we might, I might be jumping uh, ahead a little bit but uh, when Lydia is trying to uh, when Lydia's trying to tell Oscar that they're both in space and they've been oh, abducted yeah. by aliens, he doesn't understand her at first, and then she says Star Wars, and oh, then yeah. he, he he gets that. And I thought that's very smart because uh, pop, pop pop culture is a way of bringing barriers down. It's, it is. It's, it's like a, it's it's like a it's like a hidden language. Um, uh, even even if we don't speak the language, the images and uh, and you know certain key phrases. Uh, are universal now. Uh, Superman. If, if, if you tell, if you say Superman anywhere in the world, uh, even even if the other person doesn't speak the language, they will know what they're you're talking about. Star Wars, uh, things like that. So yeah, uh, pop culture, American pop culture in in that specific story, but pop culture in general is a way of bringing down you know, barriers, cultural barriers and language barriers and all that. But that's, that's, I think that's, that, that comes up in issue three, I think, when they're trying to figure out where they are. Yeah. Um, a little bit further after they sort of escape the, the first room and the, the actual yeah, aliens yeah. in charge turn up for the first time. The, yeah, yeah. The design is so nice. I'm just going to pop that up on the screen real quick. It's, the design is in, the, the the design of the whole alien ship and the aliens and everything is insane. Uh, it's just uh, I, I and and you know panels like these that shows that they are traveling uh, like at warp speed or yeah you know just uh, because they obviously go to when they show the planet it's, it's something uh, like very different from anything we see. It's not it's not a planet. It's like a blob with with continents and stuff on it it's uh yeah. it's, it looks very weird and yeah. uh and yeah i mean st stuff like that is painted like that it's just uh it's 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 gorgeous to look at and not a single word or anything it's, right you can I, stare at it for yeah for a good 10 minutes just looking at the colors yeah <laughs> and i'm just looking at the intricacies in these two aliens and i love the fact that they're like yeah. pill bugs 
Yeah. You know, they just roll up into this bowl and roll around the ship. Yeah, the, the design is amazing. And, and, yeah, I mean, look at the page like that. That's uh, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, but that's, that's when they see the full scale of the alien ship for the first time. It's... And it's it all looks very organic and alien at the same time, so it's not, it's not very it's not very mechanical, like you see in some science fiction books. It's, it's it, it all looks very organic, uh, yeah. like the whole the whole ship is a living uh, entity, but uh, but at the same time it's it's uh, it I I don't think I've seen anything like this before myself. It just it looks insanely good. It does. It's it's all really nice. And like again, the the, the key thing as well for me is the colours. Yeah. They're so vivid. Yeah. The colours are amazing and uh and even when the aliens speak, the the, the yes. speech bubbles are in colour. So uh so colours colours play a very important element. And I think I mean if I haven't tried to decode uh, fully what they're trying to understand, but uh, different color, different colors and different color schemes mean different things to the aliens. So they use blue and yellow and green mm. in in the speech bubbles. And if you look at it, it's uh, there is there's some kind of simple language based uh, color based language that uh, yeah. that you can make out if if you you know get a pen and paper and decide to. The cold, the whole thing. Yeah, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the colors are especially with the with the alien spaceship parts. It's just uh, it's just insane, and it it all adds to the otherworldly elements. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's that's the that's the world that I was talking about. It looks like an egg. Yeah, it does. So, it looks like if Earth was an egg. <laughs> yeah, and I like the but, the juxtaposition uh, a little while at the start of Chapter 5 with the the Earth fly and the alien fly. Yes, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's kind of a metaphor for the struggle between the... the like, like a miniature uh, version of the struggle between, between Oscar and Liddy and the aliens, but mm. in, uh, in insect formats. And I think I think it the the flies both flies die at the end and uh, I might be reading too much into it but uh, but uh, I, I think it's a it's it's a metaphor for uh, fighting each other is going to kill us both and because uh, because in the end I mean uh, the Lydia and Oscar have to bargain with the aliens. Basically, they, they they don't fight it to to the death. They eventually they they reach a peaceful resolution. Uh, they tell them what they 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 uh, capture one of one of the aliens and they say we will release the aliens if you let us go and the yeah. aliens let them go. Basically, so uh, so so they don't carry on fighting. They just, just stop and peacefully resolve everything in the end. And uh, I think the flies killing each other is a metaphor for what will happen if. We just decide to carry on fighting and not stop for a second and try try a different way. Yeah. So uh, so kind of the other uh, result. And, and I, yeah, in, in chapter five, also the aliens kind of tap into Lydia's and Oscar's minds. Yes. And they, just... they they kind of they have a they have a, like a mind hive where they read their minds and Oscar Lee reads Liddy's mind and uh, Liddy reads Oscar's mind and they all realize the kind of struggle that Oscar and Liddy have been through and I think that's part of the reason why they decide to let them go because you know that these characters have been through a lot as it is and uh, they don't need more uh, tragedy yeah. in their life and Just let them go I got the impression from the aliens part of that story as well that it was supposed to show that the the two aliens themselves are also trying to find refuge. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it looks like... Uh, I'm not sure because it's all in... Uh, I think it's Spanish? A, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. But it looks like they were also... Um, their pl I'm not sure if it's that, their planet or if it's just a planet they've come across, but 
it's also dying. And then the ship appears overhead and they take off in the ship. That would explain why they're uh, doing all the experiments on Earth. Maybe they're just trying to find another planet to live on. Yeah, that's that's what I got the impression of. Because there's all these dead fish and the ocean has turned red. Yeah. And yeah. then a couple of pages later you see them talking about something and there's a hologram of Earth. On their that, computer systems. Yeah, 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 I can see that now. Um, also, we have a question for you in the chat. Um, oh, uh, is it from? Gandhi says, where did Ahmed learn? I'm assuming they mean your uh, art. Uh, where did I learn? Um, I, I'm self-taught. Uh, I just, just a lot of practice, a lot of reading, really. Uh, uh, I loved comics ever since I was a kid, uh, and I loved growing, but when the time came to uh, study something academically uh, I come from a family of doctors and uh, and engineers so they said you know uh, study medicine or engineer or something and keep growing as a hobby which I did because I was uh, I was 16 at the time and easily persuaded by grown-ups <laughs> uh, and yeah I just I, I kept doing art as a hobby uh, on the side and went through a time when I mean, I mean, it was always on the back of my mind that I wanted to make comics at one day and I wanted my name on a comic that I've drawn at some point in my life. But uh, kind of went through a period when I wasn't really doing anything about art. And then I turned 30 and I started getting back at it. You know, I just realized I was not, I was not getting any younger. And if I want to make a comic, um, I have to start now. And... Uh, yeah, yep. that's, that's that's how I learned. This, this was pretty much the same for me with this stuff as well. Like, I'd wanted to make comics since I was a kid, and then I fell into hospitality, and that yeah. took up, like, all my time. And then I moved here and met Robin, and Robin eventually encouraged me to start doing my artwork for work stuff again. Um, yeah. And then yeah. I met Ryan, I started writing a comic, and then I started meeting everybody else in the community, and... It was it was amazing because I hadn't actually put out any comics yet, but everyone just welcomed me in and like yourself and Ryan and Brent Harshman and Frankie and just yeah yeah everyone's just like oh you you're gonna write some stuff and you're drawing some stuff cool hi yeah because uh, we've all been uh, in that stage where we wanted to do it and but we were still trying to figure out how. Uh, or when, or you know, find the time for it. So, so I think that's that's something we can all relate to. And uh, if it wasn't for other people encouraging me at that point uh, to you know just uh, carry on doing what you're doing and just go for it, and then and, uh, and don't fall behind or anything, I wouldn't have done it in the first place. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's it's something something that every I don't think anyone just got out of university and started making comics straight away. Or you know, I think there was there was always there was always a gap, and then going for that eventually. Yeah. Very very few people just did it from the get go and 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 were doing comics from day one. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 something. And the community is pretty nice, uh, except for a very small group of people that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> no, no, everyone knows who that is, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> I managed to avoid their ire so far, which is great. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I've, uh, I've attracted their attention. No, uh, I just want to yes. make stuff and put it out there, and that's that for me. Yeah, yeah, the same. I mean, that's 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 really what it is. Just 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 make comics and put it out there, and just be generally nice to yeah. others. That's that's all what it is about. Yeah, no, that's it. And let's say same thing. That's part of the reason why I started this show, you know? There are so many books out there that even, like, that are being published by Image that yeah, the yeah. greater public don't know about. And they're such good stories. You know, whether it's the writing or the art or the way the two work together, there are so many books out there that are just so fun and enjoyable and even some just are really meaningful 
and people don't really know about them because the <laughs> largest community in the world, as we know, focuses mostly on the superhero stuff, especially in the marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I wanted mean... to start this show. Originally, I was just going to do reviews of comics that I'd read. I thought about it, and I'm like, no, you know what? There's plenty of guys out there doing videos, reviewing comics, and talking about yeah. superheroes and all the rest of it. I want to do something different and bring the focus on people like me creating stuff like what I'm creating and um, just spreading some, some joy and love for yeah, comics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Telling, telling everyone about the hidden gems Yeah, no one knows and so I, no hit, knows about. I hit Frankie up one day and said, hey, um, I've got an idea for a new way of trying no capes. Instead of me doing a talk to camera with showing off the artwork and doing like an in-depth review, do you want to come on and do it like a talk show with me and see what happens? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We'd both just <laughs> gotten our copies of She in the mail from Ryan too. So yeah. um, we yeah. decided we were both like in love with that. Unfortunately, I had to take that episode down because I fudged up somehow and lost Frankie's audio. Oh. So I've got to do a new episode about she with somebody else that's equally as excited because Frankie and I have already talked about it so it would you feel yeah. manufactured. Yeah. Um, but I am going to bring Frankie on for another story uh, episode once his uh, day job workload lessens a bit. Um, I was yeah. talking to him yeah. the other day. We're, we're going to do Met Cadet U. Okay. Um, if you haven't read that one, it's really good as well. I love the artwork in that as well. Um, and it's also one of the ones that I love because it's not really focused on any one country. Like, they sort of are okay. in a country, but it's more focused on Earth as a whole versus yeah, yeah, yeah. aliens that are trying to come. So it's not really a story about any specific society. It's just humanity. And I'm yeah, finding that yeah. those are the stories I'm drawn to the most at the moment. Um, is a lot of sci-fi and fantasy books that are set on alternate Earths or just other planets entirely. Yeah, it's just yeah. a people having adventures story rather than a story about a very specific city or a very specific suburb or things like that. Yeah, a bit, a bit like Saga, I guess. I've, yeah, uh... Uh, that's actually... I'm uh, doing that with, uh, I'm probably going to get this wrong too. I'll have to ask him. Uh, Bizan Kodabande? Or Kodabande? Um, from Mended oh. Arrow. Okay. Um, he's coming on with me in three weeks, I think. And All we're right. talking saga. Um, I love his stuff. His artwork is beautiful. And he has this, he has this site, uh, he has his own site, but he also is a regular contributor to this uh, makecomics.com or something. Or howtomakecomics.com. Okay. Um, and one article of his specifically was about the golden ratio. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's got this guide, little framework guideline with circles and lines and everything in it. I use it for everything now for composition. It helps me so much. That's cool. This whole page was done... Using I that. need to. I need to check that out. Yeah, I'd I'll um, just... I'll find it and I'll link it. I'll also I'm gonna find it right now and link it in the chat so people can that want to learn more about uh, comics can also find it. Also, if you have a quick look in your Twitter messages while I do that, you'll find a quaker. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw the message, the notification coming up, but I'm, uh, because I'm using the phone for this as well, I'm just worried about... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 no worries. Closing, closing, closing the app. So that I'm makes sense. That, uh, yeah. I forgot you but were I, using I, your I, phone. I saw that. My, my laptop is just, uh, I think it's on its last leg now. Uh, yeah. The fan, the fan is so loud. It would have been louder than both of us. No, that, and, uh, that makes sense. My old one was like that. I yeah, actually yeah. had a uh, one of those cooling tablets underneath it with like six fans in it. I thought about getting that uh, because I'm dreading the day this laptop dies. I've had, I've had it for a couple of years now, and it's. I mean, it's just, it's going to be a headache to buy a new one and set up yeah. a new one. And... 
I was just really <coughs> lucky that we managed to um, save up enough over this whole isolation thing that I could get a work computer. For the first yeah, time in yeah. like t 15 years, I have an actual desktop tower computer. <laughs> And it can actually oh. run all of the programs I need to run for work. Yeah. I, I used to have a desktop a while back, but uh, because I've been, I've, I've moved houses like four times in the past two years. So uh, a, a laptop is easier, but uh, yeah. it has its limit. It has its limitations. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's it. Then. To be able to do this show, I had to yeah. get this computer because yeah, yeah, I got a new yeah. laptop for uni last year and it was okay but it couldn't handle the demands of streaming or doing the interviews and recording them at the same time. Um, yeah, yeah, I can imagine, yeah. yeah. Yeah, let alone doing my D&D streams and also just, like, all of the video content and stuff that I have to do now moving into social media. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we had no choice. and we It was sad to see that money leave the bank account. I know, the, I know the feeling. <laughs> but it has... I, I know that feeling. Yeah, it's improved everything already, which oh, is amazing. Good. Good. good investment. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I sent that link to you, in the and I sent uh, it to the uh, chat. Yeah, I, I, I saw the notification. I'll, I'll check that out. Um, yeah, I found it really helpful for, like, figuring out how to do my page layouts and stuff, but also... Um, just the, the, the red line guidelines that he, he has in that I use that every time I start a new digital work. Even when I uh, do uh, traditional work, I lightbox it onto my page. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I penciled that traditionally. And so I lightbox that onto my page with the thin blue lines to start with. And yeah, then um, yeah. just kept going with that. And it. I, I, I never thought about using that into comics. I mean, I, I, know, I know the golden ratio, but, uh, but I never. Yeah. Told to implement it into the pages. Right? I didn't uh, either until I just... I can't even remember how I found the article. But then I started following Bizan on um, Instagram and stuff as well immediately afterwards. But yeah. yeah, he made a specific comics golden ratio template. It's got panel gutter lines as well yeah, as yeah, yeah. the thirds and then circles all through it as well to split it up and basically as long as whatever you're drawing is touching one of those lines you're golden he does a breakdown where he gets a few like covers and panels from uh, uh zdarsky and fractions hawkeye yeah yeah and shows like overlays the guideline on that and you can you'll see like every single part of it the, the arrow flying across the page, the tip of the arrow hits one of those circles. Hawkeye right. crouching on the building fits in the <laughs> negative space around the edge of the circle and between the page edge. I'm, I'm a big fan of Hawkeye, Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. Yeah, it was it's, so uh, good. It's one of my all-time favorite comics. Yeah, it uh, was a really, really good human take on Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah. And the art was amazing. David Ayer and uh, they, they had Francesco Francavilla mm. for volume two and Steve Lieber. The, 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 the talent working on this was insane. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot to learn from uh, the series, how, how to tell the story. It's uh, definitely one of the biggest influences on me because I read it early on as well when I was starting out so it was like still on my desk actually most of the time I usually put it back and then bring it up again like a few weeks later when yep. I need influence or anything but yes yeah, it's, it's one of these books I always refer to when, I'm, uh, when I need inspiration when working yeah um, and also for anyone that's watching as well that might be looking at getting into comics another resource I can say that actually I just wanted to ask uh, you Ahmed if you've uh, seen um, have you seen Mike Hawthorne's new um, The Drawing Cheat Codes book? I know Mike, but I haven't I haven't seen the book. No. So good. I'll need to check that it's, out. It's only a little book. Um, that poster there is actually like a quick reference anatomy grid okay. guide that he made. 
Um, it's got like the male figure standing up with the arm out, and then a oh, female yeah, figure I've, underneath I've, it. I've, yeah, I've, I've seen bits of it. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. And now I backed the book for the physical copy on on Kickstarter. I've, um, I've, I've seen. I've, I've seen. I've seen. I've seen bits. Of, is, yeah. is it is it running at the moment? The Kickstarter. No, it's, or, you, you just buy it straight it, on his Gumroad now. All right. All right. Um, you can get it in digital and physical format. Uh, I would get it in digital right now. Because Mike posted my book at in like late April, early June, and it only turned right. up like five weeks ago. Oh, all right. Like it, I suppose this this was easier if you were working digitally because yeah. you just have the the book and the yep everything know, the um, going into America is going pretty quick. Everything coming out of America coming out of there is just going yeah. very very slow right now. Um, cause I, I shut down international orders for my stuff in April because I saw how long things were taking. I uh, just reopened them last week after I sent a few test packages over and they got there in two weeks, which is normal. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been waiting on a gift from a friend for a month now and it's going to be really interesting when that arrives cause it's got chocolate in it. <laughs> going to be a big mess <laughs> can't, can't and, even yeah i've got coffee that's been sitting in chicago airport for a week that's just insane i, I know that there have been problems uh, yeah with it's, it's because general, but... uh everything gets sent on passenger planes all right yeah and there, so there, there isn't there's any of that. not many passenger planes going yeah. right now yeah. so it's like it's right, getting it's to it's... the airport and through <clears throat> customs real fast and then sitting then at the airport not... waiting to get on a plane yeah. So uh, for now, um, I would definitely recommend anyone that wants to get it, get the digital version. Um, I'll also link this in the YouTube description since I've talked about it now. Um, but I found it so helpful. There are so many anatomy books out there that are really detailed and then they've got all this writing and stuff. And they're good if you understand it in real depth, yeah. but they can be hard yeah. to understand. The way Mike lays out his book in this, it made so much more sense to me in my ADHD brain. I got it immediately. Um, I've been trying to eliminate a lot of the anime influences out of my faces from when I was younger. And yeah, um, yeah. I'm not sure if you've seen the, the pinup I was working on of the character doing that high kick, but that... I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah I used I've, I've that, his yeah. guide doing the face for that. And okay. it's like one of my <clears throat> proudest faces. And it's like, That's cool. it's the same character, but it looks completely different in style yeah, yeah. because just by like looking through this book and taking in these graphics and they're just, there's no words. It's all just okay. really clearly laid out diagrams that just make sense. That's, that's interesting. I'll, I'll have a look at that. Um, to, uh, I mean, to be fair with anatomy, uh, I just depend on taking pictures. Uh, yeah, photo I, references. I use a I lot of photo reference way. too. I found I found that these and and uh, you, you kind of eventually know what you need to do in order to get the right shots. Yeah, uh, it involves a lot of muscle pain because I need to like stretch myself really more than I usually do just to make the shot more uh, uh, dynamic. But yeah, so I, I end up with back pains all the time. But yeah, I mean, it's 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 handy to know, to know to understand how how the body works. Yeah. In general, you know, like different muscles, and I know what I mean about because a lot, a lot of books just show every muscle, which is not really what it was. No, you know, and that's that Mike breaks it down into shapes. It, yeah, it's like it's good. It's good to know, but it's not it's not how you draw uh, a person. Yeah, in, exactly. In, if you draw a comic. And, Especially uh, if you're not trying to necessarily draw the Marvel and DC way. Yeah. Which yeah. they go overboard on the muscle anatomy a lot of the time. And it yeah. has a very distinctive style. And uh, that's it. It's like the... I want to draw in a more comic booky Western comic book style rather than the older influences I had, which was very anime, because I yeah. just grew up drawing the cartoons I was watching. And it's taken yeah. a very long a time people, to break those habits. A lot of people get into comics in general through anime, but yeah. uh, I mean, there's um, um, personally, I think I was 
N- never never got into the anime there was there was a there was a, a big anime hype movement in the 90s with pokemon and and stuff like that at least at least in egypt and and the middle east and i never really got into that yeah. i think i was so but uh, but i've been trying to read more manga and watch more anime recently uh because i i you can so even if you're not growing in that style, there's something to oh, yeah, there's, learn. Yes, it's, there's there's a lot to learn. This it's it's very dynamic. The figure work is very dynamic. Yeah, and also especially with manga, the, the because a lot of it is in black and white. So there's a lot to learn about how to finish a page in black and white, and yeah. uh, and be economic with with uh, how much you. Uh, how much you use on the page there's there's a lot of negative space the use of negative space uh, yeah no, there really is um last week's episode with ted and roe actually um <laughs> really showed a lot of that the book that they got me to read um is as ted put it it's a master class in shadow and negative space and yeah i was yeah. blown away by it um there's one panel in that book which is probably one of my favorite panels of all time. It's just because a very simple but extremely clever use of having a character interacting with the frame of the panel. Yeah. Because he was like he was leaning on a table, is what they were depicting. But the way they drew it, they had his hand leaning and clamped around the edge of the frame. Sticking out of the panel, yeah. No, yeah. no, not even sticking out of the panel perfectly contained within the panel but where the table was supposed to be was the panel edge and it was just so beautifully drawn and well executed i actually laughed out loud when i turned to that page because i was blown away by how well it was done i'll have to check that out yeah it's um but yeah i mean because uh, because the the way manga is produced it's i I mean they uh, they do an insane number of pages every month. I've read some of the some of the work some of the uh, artists do. They they like do uh, five hundred pages a month or something like that. Yeah, the numbers were the numbers were insane. So I so I imagine they have to be very economic and and they have to really focus on telling the story. It just doesn't need to be as elaborate. The art doesn't need to be as elaborate as some of the Western stuff. Yeah, no, that's uh, right. So, so there's there's a lot to learn on how to tell the story very efficiently and how to zoom in on the elements that you need to. Like you said, I mean, somebody else would have probably drawn a very detailed table, but instead of that, it's just the panel, and you can tell somebody's leaning on something. Yeah. So the the story element has been told as you know visually, so you don't need to add all the extra details. It's nice to have, but it's not what's telling the story exactly uh... and that's kind of what i want to learn to do with my own work as well like i want the characters and everything to be detailed but not i don't want to get bogged down in the details i want to make sure i'm telling the story yeah and that's one of the reasons i love hawkeye since we've mentioned it it's just it's very simple in uh in terms of arts but uh but again, I mean, uh, what I found after years of drawing is that simple uh, can be very tricky. Can be much trickier than you know, yes. just flooding the page with details because it you really, really can. yeah. You have to you have to think about it. It has to be done in a smart way. Yeah, yeah. To make it effective storytelling when you're removing things or not including things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and when 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 uh, when there aren't many distractions on a page, you have to get what's there right. You know, you can't you can't hide it with other among other things. If it's just a a single figure on the page or or or, or that, it it needs to look right. So it's it's uh, it gets trickier when when you kind of strip down all the unnecessary elements and focus on one or two things. So, um, yeah. yeah, we're learning. Yep, that's it. Uh, I'm probably going to go and reread that book later tonight, actually, because I've got some things I want to work on, and 
Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. I'll definitely check yeah, it out. I sent you a link to the the manga that we were just talking about as well because it's yeah, just yeah. it's so pretty and it's really cheap on Comixology right now. It's like eight bucks for the first volume. Okay. That's, um, that's quite cheap. Yeah, so I got I got that f- to read it with for that episode, and I just picked immediately picked up it, volume two, which I'm going to sit down and read this weekend. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll definitely check that out. Um, also, actually, speaking of simple but really dynamic as well, uh, actually, kind of that perfect blend of simple and insanely detailed um, is Ted and Rose's work in Crowded. If you haven't read it. I haven't read it, but I know Crowded. Yeah, I'm, I'm, look, I'm so looking forward to next week's episode because I've finally got someone coming on to talk about Crowded with me. <laughs> um, it's been one of my favourites of the past few years and I've just been devouring it every single issue. Um, but just uh, their style is really cool. Um, it's not your traditional Marvel DC Big 2 sort of styles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's so vibrant and uh tr- trees um work on the colors okay is yeah incredible yeah. um and chris's story the, the is really engaging and funny um but yeah like the combination of ted and Row on pencils and inks is a winner and i know they've got some stuff that they're working on that's going to be coming out next year after crowded is all done that's going to be a bit experimental for them. They talked about it in the sh- in the episode last week, so I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with that. That's cool. I'll, I'll check it out. And yeah, I mean, um, I wish I could just take a year off and experiment with stuff. That's... Right? <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean. That's why I'm doing like so many four page scripts right now, four to ten pages max, because yeah, I don't yeah. have a lot of time, and I can only tinker with them around the projects that I'm doing that are going to make me money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I try to try to play around with uh, different elements, but just uh, you know, small things. Uh, never, you know, just like do something completely different from anything I'm doing right now. That's. Uh, I'd love to like take a year off and do uh, something that's uh, in watercolors or you know, paint instead of uh, yeah, pencils and inks or something. Just experiment with that and screw up and have enough time to repeat things and do things again until I get it right. But uh, yeah. It's, not not uh, not the right time for this. <laughs> yeah, not quite yet. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, uh, you know, at the moment trying to make sure that I can settle into a cohesive <laughs> aesthetic for my work. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. even necessarily a style, because, you know, as you know, you need to draw slightly differently for different work. Yeah. You yeah. know, what I draw for RPG stuff is different to what I draw for comics. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. Yeah, um, needs to be. But I just I'm trying to make sure that my work looks consistent is my focus right now. Yeah, I know. What I mean, I mean, uh, when I go, I don't want to change how I'm doing things now because I I think this is what people expect me to do things when they ask me to do stuff. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to surprise them with something. Like yeah. You. Well, um, if we end up working together on the network, man, like we were talking about. Yeah. Feel yeah. free to fuck around as much as you want. <laughs> because I like what you're doing now, but also if you want to get get funky with it, get funky with it. Yeah, yeah. I'll see. I mean, I'm playing around with the uh, with the whole uh retro aesthetic. That's 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 my recent uh Yeah, I'm really liking your retro look stuff at the moment. It's really cool. That's that's the recent uh curiosity. That I've been playing around with. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, when we get to that, uh, I'll see how the story is, and maybe I'll come up with something. Yeah, I still have to write insane. the story outline first. Insane. <laughs> in- insane. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I always have to just uh, wiggle uh, my style a little bit here and there. Yeah, I know what you mean. Make it look new. Awesome. Well, that's actually perfectly the hour. So, I yeah. know it's extremely late for you. So, I uh, I usually stay up until that time anyway, working. So it was, uh, yeah, it was that's a good fair. break. I'm f- frustrated with the current page, so I need the break. <laughs> yep. 
Well, yeah, thanks, thanks for thanks for uh, thanks for having me here. Yeah, and, no, thank uh, you for joining. It's been really nice. I've been wanting to do as soon as I had this idea, I, you were at the top of the list of people I wanted to come thanks. on the show. So, um, and uh, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to finally talk about Barry with somebody because uh, like every time I like I ask people, "Have you read it?" and they're like, "No, can you please read it and come back and you know so we can talk about it?" Yeah, well, <laughs> and, I'm gonna. They, they 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 never come back. So yeah, I will. Hopefully, this will encourage some people too because as soon as we're done here, I'm going to get the edited version ready and upload it straight to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and I'll share it. Yeah. Do you know uh, if any of the creators are on Twitter? Because I was looking for them. I know that Brian is on Instagram. I I don't think Brian is on Twitter, but I think uh, I think Panel Syndicate is Panel Syndicate is yeah. More more or less Marcus Martin's account. Okay. Cool. Uh, He's I I think so, or he's directly involved with them. Yeah. Well, that's cool because I know they retweeted when I posted about our episode the other day. So hopefully they'll like this. Whenever I mention Barrier online, they always, even if I don't tag them, they always like the tweets. So, uh, so they are, they are there. And, That's uh, good because I, I wanted to make sure that they knew people are talking about their work for them. And yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. Uh, and I've been uh, like tweeting about Barrier and how amazing it is for uh, ever since I've read it. So <laughs> yeah, I, hope, I, I, hope I think I'm probably going to sit know. down on the weekend and reread it after we've talked about it and like you've shared your insights and and everything. Because, um, you know, with assignment brain, it was hard to take a lot of things in. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, is, it is it is a book where you, because it's not dependent on the text, it's dependent on the art. You, you just need to sit down and look at the page and, like, s- save all the details. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, so it is quite a different read from just, you know, two people talking and you can just read the text. And, yeah. And just, the, the art is not playing the key element in telling the story. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm really looking forward yeah. to rereading it now after gleaning your insights. And... That's, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll have another chat. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'll probably message you about it going, hey, I didn't notice this before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, feel free to. Awesome. Um, well, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you? Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as uh, the Ahmad Rafat. Uh, we that's that's my handle. I think it's if you include it in the description, it's going to be easier for people to find me yep. because I'm sure no one under, will be able to figure out what's the how to write it from how I say it. And and yeah, this 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 is where I this is where I put most of my work, all the stuff I'm working on, all the upcoming stuff. So uh, yeah, that's where to find me. Awesome. And obviously, I am Sean Sunday, and you can find me as Sean Sunday Art on pretty much all social medias, um, some variation thereof. Uh, if you're an Australian illustrator, <coughs> we also have the Australian Illustrators Discord, which you can find in the links below. Uh, you can join my Discord if you want to just hang out, talk about D&D, comics, and other fun projects that I'm working on, or if you're another comics creator who would like to get in on No Capes, feel free to jump in the Discord and say hey. Uh, And we also have the Australian RPG Creatives Discord. If you make dice, if you write D&D modules, or any kind of RPG content, if you're a streamer that plays D&D live on stream, jump on into that Discord if you're based in Australia and network with all the rest of us that are trying to bring the Australian RPG community together. Uh, This has been No Capes. We have been talking about Barrier from Brian K. Vaughan, Marcos Martin, and uh, Munza Vicente. I've probably butchered that name and I apologize. (laughs) I thank you, Armit, for joining me. And um, thank you for having me. I'm really looking forward to the next episodes. You're all going to get a bonus episode on Sunday when I talk to David Gallagher about Grumble. Next week, we have Derek Robertson on Wednesday. Not sure what comic we're talking about yet. And uh, next Friday, I have DB Andrew coming on to talk about Crowded. So thank you very much. And we will see you all next week. Thank you, everyone.